Good morning, church. I'm excited to be with you again this morning. Um, we're going to have a brief message, I believe, today, but maybe a challenging one. A couple weeks ago, we talked about sight faith and the fact that sight faith can really mess you up. I want to give you a warning today that you are taking part in a social experiment. It's very likely that you're going to have to watch. I mean, you're going to have to listen to this message more than once. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven says, we live by faith and not by sight. Last week was Pentecost and was it ever Pentecost? We journeyed through the second chapter of Acts and I remember reading in Acts chapter two, verses five and six, these words. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. There were drip, different tribes and there were different tongues all in one place. And verse six says, and, and when they heard this sound, when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment and in confusion because each one heard their own language being spoken. This crowd within the crowd was being guided by something audible, not something visible. Are you being guided by sound or are you being guided by sight? The text says that they heard the sound, that they were moved by the sound of their native tongue. By a familiar sound, it was that drew them closer and together. It was not by the look of the people, for there were all different kinds of people there. There were different tribes and different tongues. There were some who may have been darker in complexion and some who might have been lighter and some who were dressed this way and some who were dressed another way. Do you know sight faith can really mess you up? There might have been some who were bald and others who had corn rolls. There might have been some with beads and others with braids. There might have been some with straight hair and some with curly hair. There might have been some with purple hair and some with gray hair. There might have been some tall and some short, some skinny and some full figured. But I ask you this morning, what does any of this matter? What do all of these people look like if you can't see at all? What do they look like if you can't see at all? What do they look like? So where am I this week? Where did I go? Really doesn't matter. You didn't like what I was wearing this morning anyway. So, so back to the text. Notice that they were all being guided by sound and not by sight. Verse six says again, for your hearing, when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Each one heard. Holy Spirit led Pastor Trey this past week in the midst of what's going on and what's happening in our nation. He led Pastor Trey this, this last week to go and to get to know Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I know many of us know what he said, but Trey was being led to actually get to know him. So he wanted to try and catch the heart behind how Dr. King protested, why he protested, and what did he do different than anyone else? Why he did what he did at all. What did he stand for? More importantly, what did Dr. King stand on? And I thought to myself at that moment when he began to share, hey, bro, I don't want you to leave me out. And so as I sought to try and grow and understand, I heard the Holy Spirit say clearly, before you even begin, hear this. The difference between MLK and the modern day is the father's heart. I'm convinced that Martin Luther King Jr. knew the father's voice and he knew the father's heart. Dr. King knew God and he knew him intimately. He was guided by the sound of his father's voice 
not by the sight of the fighting and violence. Though the violence was horrific, not much different than today, maybe even more out in the open, potentially even a little bit more violent. As you take a look at these pictures, mob lynchings would have been the norm of his childhood. Dog bite attacks at the hands of police officers, fire hoses being used, baton beatings, death, pain, and fighting all over. It was well publicized, but still it didn't move Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s position because he didn't operate on sight alone, only sound, only the sound of his father's voice, only the sound of his father's heart. That was his fuel, not the opinions of people. Listening to and obeying the father's voice. He was guided by sound, not by sight. Church, I declare this morning that sight faith can mess you up. I believe the father is intentionally showing us something here. If we go back to Acts chapter one, something pretty interesting took place. Something pretty incredible happened. In Acts chapter one, after Jesus left their sight, Acts one Verses eight and nine reads as such. Jesus said in verse eight, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And the verse nine says, and after he being Jesus said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. One more time for your hearing. Verse nine says, after Jesus said this, he was taken up from before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. He was taken up from before their very eyes and a cloud blocked their vision so that they could no longer see him. If for some odd reason right now, you can't see. You can't see the inside of your church. For weeks on end, you couldn't see people who you really love. You might be in a position right now where you can't see why in the world awful things like racism, sexism, bigotry, and hate happen at all. What are we supposed to do when we can't see? What are we supposed to do when we can't see? In Acts chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, <laughs> read as such. And this was after Jesus was taken up from before their very eyes and the cloud hid him from their sight. Verse 10 says, they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. And then suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Verse 11 they said, men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go to heaven. They watched him ascend and they can no longer track him by sight. Now, new senses have to be used. And they see these two men dressed in white which would have been abnormal for the culture of the time. These men didn't look like them and uh, they didn't even look like anyone that they would have known. But these men had something to say. So here you have two men that don't look like you, but they have a word from the Lord. Can I encourage you this morning to not get caught up in sight faith? The next heading you, you read after verse 11 says this. The disciples choose Matthias to replace Judas. So they got to work immediately, not by looking for what to do, but by listening to what they were last told to go ye. I know we live in a visual society, a social media driven society, YouTubes and tweets and Snapchats everywhere. But I ask you this morning, do you ever create time to just 
listen. To just listen. Do you know that our other senses are enhanced when we can't see? It's called sensory juggling. And the research suggests that since you no longer need to use that part of your brain, the part of your brain that processes images, then your body, your brain, what a good father, he actually starts to allocate and we begin to allocate more energy and processing power is shifted to the senses of hearing and to touch. So now the brain can make new connections in the absence of visual information. It results in enhanced compensatory abilities. Abilities such as heightened senses of hearing, memory, language, and cognitive functions. I've heard it be said like this, in foggy places where you can't see well. Uh, 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 Sister Tasha Cobbs, Minister Cobbs put it like this. There are some places where we're being led and we know that God is leading, but it's foggy. And so if there's a shepherd leading sheep, if you can catch this illustration, there's a shepherd leading a sheep in foggy places. The sheep can't operate in that moment off of sight. Sheep simply have to operate off of sound. They have to listen for the shepherd's voice to continue to be led. If you're in places where you might not be able to fully understand, listen for the shepherd's voice. Church, I encourage you this season to ask if we're being guided by the sound of his voice or by the sight of the violence.